here by God, who is given an opportunity to act in whatever, you know, he, we have an option here, either act accordingly the way you're supposed to, or be slothful. My attitude is that anybody who wants to set aside like this wants to be slothful. Well, this wants is Mark, and eat it too. This is the great contest. This is the one time you're alive in this plane to stand up against evil. The enemy That's is right. totally into evil. They know where they're getting their power. They tell the world they're atheists when they're totally obsessed with with religion. And then here we are seeing it all being fulfilled. And then the Bible, a five year old, literally, it, it's it's right there. And you've got all these cowards who are in denial. I want to go back to my uncle and then get Cornkey to comment again. On that, uh, give us more. I mean, I mean, what about my c comments? Just as a layman, where it says the beast wages war against the saints. I mean, it, it's all there, and you've got to take the mark. And he's chopping Christians' heads off, and then they just say, "Oh no, that doesn't exist. Oh no, uh, everything's fine." But in reality, he comes and says he's Jesus, and the fakes follow him. That's going to be all these mainline churches. Well, the hypocrites and the heretics have lots of convoluted ancillary doctrines that they use to back up the false doctrine of the pre-tribulation rapture, rapture, as you have uh, just uh, talked about. But let me finish real quick with this reference in the Old Testament from Matthew 24. As in the days of Noah, while the world was being destroyed, the true believers were in the ark, in the flood, above. They, did, they went through the trouble, they went through the tribulation, they went through the destruction, and because they were faithful, they were brought through alive to the new kingdom, and that's exactly what's going to happen to we, the believers. We're going to be here, we're going to fight, we're going to build the ark, we're going to sweat and use elbow grease and do what we can to get ready, and then God will take care of the rest. And what it says finally in verse 40 is that, Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. The one who is taken is the wicked, the one who is remaining is the righteous. And that's the true tri uh, post-tribulation doctrine. And there again, we have an opportunity here, as I've said, to build. But the biggest, you know, let's think about this for a second, guys. How many times, in how many ways in Hollywood, or with Holly Weird, as of course as we actually call it, or in books, or in all these publications created by our enemy, have they told us that we just need to throw out our Christian philosophy, our Christian belief, our Christian teachings, and it's interesting that, but never theirs, of course. Always we have to bend to them. Now, people would say, well, that's because Christianity doesn't have any strength. Really? Then why has our enemy spent so much resource and so much time to try and defeat the works and writings of Jesus Christ? Because when you call upon his authority, I can I can bring person after person. Well, I mean, look at the military. founding fathers. Look at, at, at Captain Bly in their twenty-one foot boat with eighteen guys with enough food for one day, living forty-one days, and and, and and you know they have the letters and, and the accounts of that over and over again. They said we've got to make account of ourselves. Give a hundred percent, and then and then God may provide. You know, it's the faith of stepping out on the battlefield and, and committing to the cause of good. Then God comes to your aid. Uh, you know, it isn't just let's dress up in fancy outfits and go to a church like a bunch of painted trollops. Uh, I want to get a take from my, uh, from Corn Key and, and then Mr. Hammond on that. Well, again, we we have an opportunity. We're we're at the point where we have to decide to put our money where our mouth. I think that's the biggest problem people have. Is it's nice to watch a movie from the sidelines. It's not necessarily uh, the the most fun to be part of the movie or part of the experience. In other words, the history, you know, the true events that make up history, because there is a lot of blood, sweat, and tears involved. But the exciting thing is for those who participate, is that the rewards are so great, and they're not monetary rewards. There is a point where you realize you've done something right, where you realize that you've been part of something that you were that was that was gifted to you as an opportunity through God, and that you've actually stepped forward and you your medal has been tested and you win. And even if we fall, guys, here think about this for everybody out there listening. Even if we were to fall, doesn't it say that we come back with the legions that defeat the enemy? What fear do we have? What fear can we possibly have? What fear can our enemy strike in us? I know, account after account, guys, where men have been, have been uh, threatened by demon, you know, occult worshippers in the military. I've seen this firsthand. And each case, the man stood right there and called upon the authority and the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, and it was like the swine that had the demons in them. They fled.
People. Yeah, for those that don't know, the military, it's all over the news here, is just filled with Satanists now, and they uh, do try to hurt, and, and, and it's true, they they are scared to death of us. And it's uh, it's so simple, here's the thing, what, the, what was said about Faust years ago, remember the old story, Faustus, Faustus, thou art damned, Faustus, and again, each step when he wanted to change the contract, because all he had to do was call upon the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, instead the demon would threaten him, and he would think the devil had more power. But when hell opened up, what did they do? They came up and they laughed as they dragged him into perdition because they said, at any time you could have left us. At any time you could have walked away and we could do nothing about it. But you gave authority to the wrong being. You gave authority to the devil instead of giving authority to that yeah. who deserved it. Let me give it, uh, go back to my uh, uncle. Why do these uh, people that go to the mainline churches, I mean, they are willfully blind, and then once they're given over to the blindness, they're blind to Bush, they're blind to all of it, uh, they just cling to this. Is it just too scary to them to know they're going to have to go through this? There's an answer to that. The pre-tribulation rapture doctrine is a hypocritical doctrine that appears to those who want to appear spiritual, but who want to indulge, walk, and live after the flesh. Every day in the believer, it's a war between the flesh and the spirit. And like Solomon says in Proverbs, there is no discharge in this war. There is no retirement. That's right. Exactly what we've said for years. There's no retiring from the Patriot Movement, for if you understand that it's all part of the process of life and the process of what our founding fathers understood completely, then there's no stepping away. There is no walking away. Grandpas and grandmas listening right now, I know it sounds so tempting. It's so easy to say I can relax. And in reality, though, think about it. What greater safety is there than to know that your sons and your daughters are safe and that they are secure in the knowledge of what they should know, or that your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren should know the same knowledge, should have the same processes that you had built into their being so that they, too, will rise up when the time comes. That's safety and security. Well, it's really simple. I mean, are we going to allow a group of globalists to re-engineer the, 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 the species to try to kill 90% of the public at least? I mean, this is stated in United Nations Biological Diversity Assessments. These are raving, psychopathic killers, and it is a grand delusion. The, 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 people buy into little lies, and they have to buy into all the other lies. It is a conscious choice and then they're totally turned over to it. The good news is some people aren't too far gone to be able to do that. I wanted to uh, get my uncle's take on all the craziness uh, that is uh, happening right now with the youth brigades uh, and uh, the National Guard to be doing gun confiscation. I mean, is this even amazing you how fast it's moving? Well, it's all going by the book, like the Johnny Cash song goes. There's a further answer to your prior question, and that is, most of your churchgoers today just want to be believers. They don't want to obey. And the Bible says that the demons believe and tremble. So that's not enough. We need to be disciples, not just Christians. And we need to obey what the Word says and be doers. The word Christian appears in the Bible about seven times. The word disciple appears about 230 times. What do you think he wants us to be? Mere Christians? are obeying dedicated disciples. There's a big difference. And as far as this uh, repeat of history goes, remember in Hitler's Germany, prior to the takeover in 33, Ernst Röhm was the leader of the SA. Hundreds of thousands of all kinds of weirdos launched out to go through the streets and beat everybody into submission. Hitler used those worthless curs to get his job done and then on the light of the, no of the long knives, he wiped them all out from Ernst Rome all the way down, and he brought in his 100% loyal SS. They were not loyal to anyone but him, not to the nation, not to the army, not to anything. Well, that's what this 100 million cannon fodder group is. They are the equivalent of the SA, which will be used as stormtroopers to run through the streets, beat everybody into submission, and then when they are ready to get rid of them, they'll be gone. 
Well, I just, it's so classic to be hiring felons and aggravated felons for the military and police and to be uh, hiring youth brigades to spy on people. And now at every major airport, they're now putting the, the body scanners in. I've got the news articles, but I've gotten emails from people where they go, you will go through it and, and we will scan your naked body. And then they come up with tasers and get around you if you won't. I mean, this is... This isn't, and now they, the Homeland Security is proposing making us wear shock bracelets when we get on planes, everybody. I mean, Mark, this is getting even more ridiculous than I could imagine. Well, the, and the thing here, too, again, remember, I'm, I want to touch on this because I know we don't have much time, but real quick, people, we have to organize. And what we're seeing there is, are in the international zones, by the way, think about this, the airports are the international ports of entry. That's how they brought all this in as alien law separate from the United States. It's why they wanted to convert all of our airports from local airports into regional slash airports tied into the international the airports. That's right. That has brought in alien contract law, admiralty law, through the all the rest of the nonsense. 